Hi everyone, I'm Kimberly, and before I share my story, please like and subscribe. Trust me, you'll want to hear how my own brother and his wife tried to destroy everything I built, but karma had other plans. It's been two years since I lost my parents in that terrible car accident. They left me their pride and joy, a beautiful jewelry boutique that I'm working hard to expand. Running Aurora Gems isn't easy, especially when you're 28 and learning the ropes alone, but I'm determined to make them proud. The store looks empty today. Maybe you should consider selling while it still has some value? Rachel's sugary sweet voice makes my skin crawl as she lounges against the counter. The morning rush hasn't started yet. Besides, our online orders have doubled this month. Oh, honey, that's cute. But managing a business requires experience. Marcus and I are just concerned about you. Bank's been calling about the house payments. Are you sure you're contributing enough, Kim? I've never missed my share, Marcus. Why are they calling? Just adult stuff. Don't worry about it. But I did worry, especially when Rachel started helping with the store's books. Let me handle the accounting, sweetie. I used to work in finance, you know. That should have been my first red flag. Today, while reviewing last month's records, something felt off. The numbers didn't add up. There was a $15,000 discrepancy in our sales versus deposits. Rachel, these numbers don't match. Where's the money from the Valentine's Day sale? Oh, those? I made some executive decisions about reinvesting. Marcus agreed it was best. You what? This is my business. Our family's business, you mean. Don't be so territorial, Kimberly. We're just looking out for you. I confronted Marcus that evening in his home office. Did you authorize Rachel to move money from my store's account? Lower your voice. Rachel's trying to help. You're too young to understand business. I understand enough to know something's wrong. The house payments, the missing money. Just stay in your lane, Kimberly. Focus on selling pretty necklaces and leave the real decisions to us. Discovered made my blood run cold. Almost $50,000 had vanished over three months, disguised as vendor payments to companies that didn't exist. My phone buzzed. A bank notification. Someone had just attempted to transfer another $20,000 from the store's account. My hands shook as I clicked on my banking app. There it was. Pending transfer authorization. Requested by Rachel Anderson. I heard whispers from downstairs. Marcus and Rachel's voices carrying through the vent. She's getting suspicious. We need to move faster. Don't worry, baby. Once we clear out her accounts, we'll figure out what to do about your sister. The next morning, I marched downstairs with my laptop and financial records, determined to expose Rachel's theft. I found them both in the kitchen. Want to explain why you tried to transfer $20,000 from my store account last night? Kimberly, you're being hysterical. Rachel rolled her eyes. I told you, I'm managing the investments. By stealing, I found all the fake vendor payments. Marcus, she's robbing me blind. Marcus stepped between us. You're just jealous of Rachel. She's trying to save your failing business. Failing? I've doubled our sales. The only thing failing is your backbone, Marcus. Mom and Dad would be ashamed. Rachel's face twisted with rage. How dare you? After everything we've done for you? Marcus, she's trying to turn you against me. No, I'm calling the police. I turned toward the stairs, clutching my laptop. Give me that. Rachel lunged for my computer. We struggled at the top of the stairs. I remember Rachel's hands shoving hard against my chest, then nothing but air beneath my feet. The fall seemed to last forever. I heard Marcus scream, felt the sharp crack of my head against the bottom step, then darkness. But death wasn't peaceful. Instead, I was trapped in a twilight state, aware but unable to move or speak. The doctors called it a coma. I called it hell. She's been stable for three days now. A doctor's voice pierced my darkness. What are her chances? Marcus sounded worried, but not for me. Hard to say. The brain trauma was severe. Later, Rachel's whisper slithered through my consciousness. This might work out better than we planned. What do you mean? Think about it. Her life insurance policy, the business. If she never wakes up. Rachel. 
that's my sister. Your sister who accused your wife of theft. Who would have ruined us? The doctor said she might be brain damaged anyway. We'd be doing her a favor. I screamed inside my motionless body. Then a new voice, gentle, determined. I'm Sarah, your night nurse. I'll be taking care of you, Kimberly. Sarah spoke to me like I was there. One night she noticed my finger twitch when Rachel mentioned insurance. That's the third time she's responded to their conversations, Sarah muttered, scribbling in a notebook, especially when they discuss removing life support or selling her store. I focused all my energy on moving anything. A finger, an eyelid. Sarah documented every twitch, every slight change in my vitals. Your sister-in-law filled out paperwork to be your medical proxy, Sarah told me during her rounds. But don't worry. I've seen cases like this before. I'm building a record of everything. Through my fog, I heard Rachel and Marcus planning, once we're named medical proxy, we can make the tough decisions. You mean pull the plug? It's been two weeks, Marcus. The insurance policy pays triple for accidents. We could pay off your gambling debts, save the house. I've brought someone to meet you, Kimberly. This is Detective Chen from Financial Crimes. Sarah's voice carried its usual warmth, but today held something else. Hope. Nurse Williams has shared her concerns and documentation with me, a deep male voice said. If you can hear me, Kimberly, I want you to know we're investigating. I fought through the fog to move my finger, our established signal for yes. There it is again, Sarah exclaimed. She responds consistently when we discuss her case. Remarkable. And you've documented every conversation between her brother and sister-in-law? Three weeks' worth. They don't even try to hide their plans anymore when they think it's just them and a vegetable. Detective Chen's voice hardened. Rachel Anderson? Or should I say Rachel Morrison? Or was it Rachel Patel in Arizona? My heart would have skipped if I had control over it. Who was this woman my brother married? I ran her prints from the medical proxy paperwork. She's got quite a history. Three previous marriages, all ending with suspicious insurance claims. Two of her husbands died under mysterious circumstances. Through my fog, I heard rapid typing. And look at this. Marcus Preston's bank records show massive transfers to offshore accounts. He's been embezzling to cover gambling debts. They were in here earlier, Sarah added. Rachel was talking about some guys named Tony and Vic demanding payment. She told Marcus they could use the jewelry store sale to make them go away. Loan sharks, Chen muttered. This explains the urgency to liquidate Kimberly's assets. More typing sounds. The house is mortgaged to the hilt. Multiple credit lines opened in Kimberly's name. They've been setting this up for months. Detective, Sarah's voice shook slightly. Yesterday I overheard Rachel on the phone. She's found a buyer for the store. They're planning to forge Kimberly's signature on the sale documents. Not if I can help it. I've seen enough to bring in our forensic accountants. We'll need to move fast, though. A warm hand squeezed mine. Sarah. Did you hear that, Kimberly? We've got them. All those conversations I recorded. The documentation of your responses. They prove you're aware and unconsenting to their plans. And Rachel's fingerprints on the forged documents we found. She's not as clever as she thinks, Chen added. We've contacted her previous victims. They're willing to testify. I managed to squeeze Sarah's hand. Barely a flutter, but enough. There's my fighter, she whispered. Detective Chen has a surveillance team watching them. They won't get away with this. The trap is set, Chen confirmed. Now we just need to let them walk into it. Sarah, keep documenting everything. And Kimberly, stay strong. Justice is coming. Coming out of the coma was like swimming through molasses. First, my fingers started responding more consistently. Then my eyes could flutter. Sarah was there through every milestone, and Detective Chen visited regularly, keeping me updated while my body caught up with my mind. Take it slow, Kimberly, Sarah cautioned as I finally managed to speak in whispers. Marcus and Rachel don't know you're improving. That's our advantage. Detective Chen had a plan. While I recovered in secret, moved to a private room under an alias, he helped me protect everything I had left. Sign here, he instructed, holding up legal documents. 
This puts Aurora Gems into an irrevocable trust. Even with forged documents, they can't touch it now. The security cameras went in next. Small, undetectable, catching every moment in my store where Rachel continued to plot, unaware she was sealing her own fate. Tony's breathing down my neck. Rachel hissed at Marcus in the store's back office. If you don't get him his money, he'll break more than your fingers next time. The store sale is almost done. Once we pull the plug on that vegetable upstairs. You mean your sister? God, you're pathetic, Marcus. This isn't even my biggest score. You should have seen how much I got from my last husband's accident. Every word captured in pristine digital quality. Then came the day of reckoning. I walked into my own store, Sarah supporting me on one side, Detective Chen flanking my other. Miss me? Rachel's face went ghost white. Marcus stumbled backward, knocking over a display case. Kay Kimberly, but how? Surprised to see your murder victim walking and talking? Detective Chen stepped forward. Rachel Morrison, or should I use one of your other aliases? The color drained from Rachel's face. I don't know what you're... Save it for court. Rachel Morrison, you're under arrest for attempted murder, fraud, and conspiracy. Your previous victims are very interested in testifying. As they cuffed Rachel, Marcus tried to bolt. He made it three steps before running straight into two more detectives. Marcus Preston, you're under arrest for embezzlement and conspiracy to commit murder. Kimberly, please, Marcus begged. She made me do it. I'm your brother. You stopped being my brother the moment you chose her over me. Enjoy explaining those offshore accounts to the feds. Oh, and Marcus? Tony says hi. Six months later, I sat in my expanding jewelry store, now a chain with three locations. Sarah, my new business partner and best friend, handled the books, legitimately this time. Did you see this? She handed me the morning paper. Rachel's face stared back from the headline. Black Widow Fraudster Gets 25 Years. Her past victims really came through with their testimony, I mused. Karma is beautiful, isn't it? Speaking of karma, Sarah pointed out the window. There was Marcus, shuffling past in his McDonald's uniform. After the loan sharks took everything and the bank fired him, that's all he could get. He lived in a roach-infested studio apartment now, a far cry from our family mansion. Want to know the best part? Sarah grinned. Rachel's been writing confessions to the DA about other crimes, trying to reduce her sentence. She's throwing Marcus under every bus she can find. I touched the scar on my head, a permanent reminder of their betrayal. But looking around at my thriving business, my true friend Sarah beside me, I smiled. They thought they could break me. Instead, they destroyed themselves. You know what this place needs? I told Sarah, unlocking the display case. A new line of silver karma pendants, what do you think? Last I heard happens when you mess with the wrong sister. Remember to hit like and subscribe if you want to hear more stories about karma serving exactly what people deserve. What would you do if you discovered your sibling was willing to end your life for money? Would you ever be able to forgive them? Or do you believe some betrayals are truly unforgivable? The scariest part of my story isn't the attempted murder or the fraud. It's how my own brother, who grew up sharing the same parents and memories, could turn against me so completely. Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Have you ever experienced betrayal from someone you thought would always protect you? How did you handle it? If my story resonated with you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more real stories about overcoming betrayal and getting justice. Sometimes the people closest to us can be the most dangerous, but they can never break us unless we let them.